Hello and welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast with your host, metaphysician, Reiki master, and hypnotherapist, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week, we will discover teachings, tips, and tools to radiate your best life ever with practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Hello and welcome back to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Today we radiate healing with Adam Scott Campbell from Colorado, who's had a very interesting story of healing of his own. Welcome, Adam. It's so good to have you. I'm glad this worked out. Yeah, Christy, me too. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Now you contacted me. Now, had you heard the Real Life Angel Encounters podcast? Just a, a one or two episodes. I just, I wasn't, I don't usually look listen to podcasts, you know. I was actually looking to share my story and I figured podcasting might be a good way to um, to connect with someone who could get the story out there better than I could alone, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's you, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's me. Well, well, sadly, I mean, you contacted me on the Real Life Angel Encounters uh, Gmail, which is Angel Encounters Podcast at gmail.com because there are still listeners, although I put that podcast to bed. But then your story was so compelling. I wanted to have you on this show because I think it's important. So you had a remarkable healing journey that led you to write a book. Can you tell us about it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I, um, I have the book here, um, but um, anyway, I, I went through a bunch of stuff, you know, and um, like we have the book here, but um, yeah, you know. the book is Walking With My Angel by yes. Scott Campbell. And we can get this on Amazon, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, but the things, I mean, you're probably wondering how I came to know about my angel. Yeah. Um, right. Mm -hmm. um, so, so long story. Well, we can do long story short or short, but, um, no, long story. I learned about fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so after a bunch of stuff, we can go into this in a sec, but after a bunch of stuff that happened, I was at my end. Um, I was dying. And my, my and long story short, I've, I've had a lot of, like, I've had two brain tumors or a recurring brain tumor, I should say. Wow. Um, and so the... Age, from what I understand. Yes, I, I was nine the first time it happened. Um, wow. Was it cancer? Yeah. Um, they didn't know. Um, one doctor said it was cancerous. One doctor said it wasn't. Um, so they really don't know. And they took care of it as far as we know. And so I don't have it now. So at least that takes care of the issue for now. Right. right. Um, so, so, but, but, you know, after everything that's happened since then, you know, a lot of stuff has happened. I've had breakdowns. I've had, I see double, um, constantly. I've had eye surgeries that haven't fixed the issue. I have, um, I've, my blood pressure almost like inched toward the roof. And then my parents thought they were going to lose me after brain surgery in senior year, the second brain surgery. So a lot of stuff's happened since then. I've had breakdowns of other stuff. And it's just like, after all of that, I, I made a decision because I felt like it was what God wanted me to do. And, you know, I, I made the decision to go off my medication, you know, that I've been on for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And during those, there were nine months of not being had, not having medication, nine months. And so my brain was shutting down. Oh, wow. Um, does that make sense? It does. It does. Um, it sounds like that was um, uh, a necessary medication. Yes, very much so. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so you're probably, I don't know, what are you wondering now? Because I'll answer whatever question you got. So you, you went off of it and you felt that, that you were really compelled to from the other side. Like you, that was the right thing to do. Yes. So what happened? Yes. 
I broke down over nine months. Um, my brain broke down and I, I stopped being able to function. Oh my. Um, I, my, I couldn't, I forgot how to do things. I forgot, I forgot things that I should know. Like, did I take a shower 10 minutes ago? Did I eat yesterday? Did I take a nap like half an hour ago? You know, it's just little things. I'd forget everything. I couldn't remember anything. My, my head started to hurt. Um, but not just my head, like my thoughts, my thoughts themselves would hurt me. Um, it became painful. Yeah. It, hurt, it became painful to think. Um, and so, so at the, at the end of those nine months, um, I was basically, my brain was shutting down cause it couldn't handle anymore of uh, being without medication. Mm-hmm. Um, so Did family know that you had gone off the medication. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, you know, they, they weren't, it wasn't something that they were happy about, but they trusted that this was from God, that this was from the other side, as you put it. And they were just, they were letting me make my own decision. Um, and I stuck with the decision. Right. So, so at the end of those nine months, um, I'm, I'm still able to walk around. I can't talk to anybody cause my, my mind is at war and it's, it's like basically shutting down and, but I'm, I'm walking towards the front, the front doors of my church building, you know, cause I, I attend church and, and as I'm walking toward the front doors, I heard this voice in my head. Um, I heard this voice in my head. It was, it's just two words. And it just said, it's time, you know, mm-hmm. just those words, it's time. Wow. And I, I, I've learned since then that those words weren't spoken to me. Really? They were spoken. Yeah. They were spoken by God to an angel. Wow. And when, and, and I've, but I've learned that it's been a long time for me to learn that. But um, so when, when I heard those words immediately, an angel came and she was, she was full of glory and love and power full of, she's just full of this. And she just rushed toward me is the word I use. And then she engulfed me. Right. Yeah. And so you she saw engulfed her me. physical eyes. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I, I saw it, but I, I didn't see her for very long. I saw her for about two or three seconds. Sure. Um, because that's how fast she was coming. It was like, it was like an angel straight from heaven to me in two seconds which is pretty fast, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, so, so then she engulfs me, right? Like her energy, her love, her eternal power. I'm engulfed by this. And, and because of that, she gave me life when I didn't have any left. Oh. She saved my life. And, and, and it was like, I'm talking a lot. Um, but, you know, it's like, it, it, of course, it's the huge, it's the biggest thing that ever happened to me at that point, right? Um, so, yeah, that, does that answer the first part of the question? It does. Yeah, okay. I'm loving this story so far. Okay. So what else? Enough. What else? When you? Well, just um, how did she? How did she appear in those two three seconds? Do you remember anything of her appearance? I remember that I know that I, that I recognized her and that probably sounds bizarre or maybe that sounds bizarre. Mm-mm. I recognized her face. I recognized her energy and I felt, and I know her, I knew her energy. Like it felt very, very familiar. Like I'd known her many, many, t- many times before. Like I, and I know I'd known her, you know, you know, when you've met, you meet somebody that you've just known before, you don't know how you know them. Um, it was like that, you know, exactly like that. Wow. And how did it feel when she just like completely engulfed you? Um, imagine that you've got like all this excruciating nine months worth of pain that's just built up and you're full of tension and you're barely holding on and and you've got all this stuff that's just like wrenching you apart. And then you're, and then you're, and then you're bound in the arms of eternal love. So those two warring um, uh, feelings 
together, like intertwined very, very tightly in a, in a moment of excruciating everything, you know? Wow. Is that, yeah. <laughs> is that? That's amazing. So did you know immediately what was going on? Like that she was an angel kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, I knew. Oh you know? my gosh. I mean, I... I mean, I've been raised to believe in angels, right? Good. Mm -hmm. I've never been engulfed like that before or since. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I knew because of, I, you know, you don't forget that in a hurry, first of all. And you, don't, and you don't mistake it for something else. You don't pretend it's something it's not. I, I knew she was an angel, and I knew that she'd come to save me for those two seconds that I, that I sensed her and saw her. And then she just, and then when she engulfed me, it was like, okay, I'm going to be okay. Things are horrible and I've never been in greater pain, but things are going to be okay. Mm. Right. Um, so things start changing for you after this, like what happened, what happened after this? You know, well, first of all, I don't remember the embrace ending. Okay. I don't remember her leaving. I don't remember anything else i don't remember going into the church building where i was planning to go into when she came i don't remember anything other than that moment but i do remember that because it was soon after that probably within the next week week and a half i was in the closed psychiatric hospital ward um in here in denver um one of the hospitals here and um and of course knowing that she had saved me was like, because, you know, I knew what eternal love was. I didn't want to be here anymore. I wanted to be with her in heaven because I felt like that's, I mean, I belong with her is that kind of thing. You know, it's the most, that's another, that's a different kind of wrenching pain, but it's like heart pain, you know? Um, right. So, um, so it was just, it was a struggle because I was just like trying to, um, trying to learn, relearn to function in a meant in a psych ward. After all this stuff had happened for nine months and this angel saves me and it's, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> I, that's a long answer, you know? Wow. And obviously you regained function after this period. How did that happen? Slowly. It happened very, very slowly. Um, for example, I didn't, I tried holding jobs, you know, mm -hmm. and after, after a while, cause it took like probably a couple of years for me to come down enough that I could even think about holding a job. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been embraced. I've been touched by heaven. And so, so it was just like the next couple of years, I, I just, relearn to function. I relearn to eat. I relearn to walk. I relearn to, to talk to people. I relearn to, to go do things with people. And it was hard because there was no desire, none to do any of it. There was no desire to engage in anything. It's like, it's like the everyday becomes so mundane that it's ridiculous. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, right. so, um, it was just no go ahead go ahead did she did she make a did she reappear did you have any other visitors come along while you were recovering um she didn't reappear as she did when I, when she came you know i've seen her since then but it's not i see her in my spirit's eye or my mind's eye yeah. if that makes sense oh yeah Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's different, you know, it's a different thing. Right. Yeah. What type of, what type of feeling or emotion do you get from her now? Comfort, love, but it's very gentle. Yeah. I also get this feeling of, sometimes I get this feeling of she longs for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you, you know, we don't, you know, Christy, we don't, we're talking for the first time, but um, for most of my life, I haven't liked myself much. 
um, because of the things that I've been through, I kind of saw myself as a freak, scarred, um, beat up, worthless, what have you. Um, so, so to have her manifesting her love to me in my mind's eye and, and like, I can see her in my mind's eye holding me. I don't feel her physically, but I see her doing that. And I see her like with this love and this longing and this devotion that I don't understand fully. Um, so I, I, does that answer? Does, is that? Yeah, it, it does. It, it does. Having never had an experience quite like that. I, you know, I'm fascinated and I want to know all the things. So, you know, I, before we started recording, Adam, I asked you if you'd had a near death experience and it wasn't that it was a living experience, but it sounds just as powerful. Well, I'd almost died. You know, if she hadn't come, I would have died. So it was a near-death experience in that way, True. right? Mm -hmm. So everyone that I know who's had a near-death experience, and I've interviewed a lot on this show and on the other show as well, Real Life Angel Encounters, um, and they all say that it's a that's where that's where I want to be. I don't here in this body that has the pain. I don't want to be here. That's where I want to be. I want to be with my my people, my person, my, I want to be there. Mm -hmm. and so why do you think that she didn't just take you then? I have more to do. There's more that I, I'm, I don't want to say assigned to do, but I'm, there's more, I have a mission. Like everybody on this earth has a mission specific to them. So my mission isn't done. Um, what do you feel your mission is? I don't know. I would guess that it has something to do with um, touching another heart, saving another life. Um, and it's not something that's done, one and done. It's like something that needs to happen over and over and over and over again. Um, so basically, I'm here till God calls me home. And so what are you doing to touch hearts? I'm, I mean, I'm a writer, I'm an author, and I just finished my, my I mean, obviously we talked about it, but um, right. my book, Walking With My Angel, mm -hmm. um, the, the power that's in this book is tremendous, um, and I'm not, I'm, 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 that's a really bold claim to, to make, you know, and I, I get that, um, but I also you know, know. it's not entirely you, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I also know that it, it has the ability to bring light into people's minds, hearts, lives. Um, and the reason I think that it does that is because it's pure honesty. And it's pure honesty from the standpoint of, I've been through a lot, so have you, um, you know. And we, we can get through this together. You know, that's the message, really. Um, yeah. We all have this angelic support. Yes. You know, and that's the whole reason I started the Real Life Angel Encounters podcast in the first place. It's just it's the same mission, to let everybody know that we're much more than we think we are. And we have infinite support from our angelic team. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're on a similar mission there. Now, yep. there's something interesting about this book, Walking With My Angel, that it's not like other books, is it? No. <laughs> it's not your, uh, I mean, obviously it's a book of poems, but how many, I mean, basically it's a, it's an unveiling of all my, all my sacred things. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's an unveiling of sacred things and, um, and while that's been done, I don't think it's ever been done in this way. And I don't think there's, I don't think there's a brain tumor survivor on this planet that wrote a book of poems about his angel, you know, like all the things that make it up. Like, I don't think there's anything. I think you're right. You know, really. <laughs> there's nothing like it. Well, first of all, it is a book of poetry. 
Yeah. Well, I've had, let's see, David Ditchfield has been on this podcast, and he wrote um, Shine On about his near-death experience. Um, there's Susan Walter, who's been on this show. She took her, um, her experience and turned it into paintings and artwork. Um, but and there, there's Dr. Eben Alexander, who wrote Proof of Heaven after his near-death experience. But, you know, all of this work is very, um, not that yours is not factual, but it's like all narrative, right? So it's narrative. Mm -hmm. It's telling the story in a different way. And you, why, why did you choose poetry? Poetry is a lot easier. Well, not, not easier. Poetry is a lot more straightforward to, to, to pour my heart and soul into in a very time efficient fashion. And maybe that sounds robotic, but it's like, um, it's like if I can sit down, um, for a half an hour, an hour, I can knock out one of these angel poems, but I pour everything that I have into it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it becomes a force that's created in half an hour. And so it's more powerful because you can read it in half an hour. You can read it in five minutes, each poem, you know? Um, and so it's like, it's like a, it's like a, a like a, a sh you know, just a shot to the, to the heart, you know, basically in two seconds or however long, you know, and, uh, it's just, it's powerful is what I'm trying to say. Did you know that Radiate Wellness is more than just a podcast? That's right. We're also a comprehensive holistic wellness practice. Find out about our services, practitioners, and upcoming events at radiatewellnesscommunity.com. While you're there, visit our podcast page to read more about our great guests and even donate to the podcast. If you like our podcast, you can help in other ways as well, like subscribe or follow us wherever you're listening right now. Tell a friend, a family member, or a coworker about the great content you find here. And if you wouldn't mind, please give us a thumbs up, a five star rating, or a positive review. Sounds like a small thing, but it really helps. You might like to know about our Facebook communities while we're at it. We have a free community, the Radiate Wellness Community on Facebook for news and great free content. Our subscribers group is Radiate U, as in the letter U, but also, well, you. There you'll find curated replays of past classes, guest interviews, and more. And now, back to our podcast and back to our guest. Absolutely. What's your process for... Um, writing these poems, do you, do you connect with your angels first, or do you what? How do you, how do you approach? Like, how do you get these poems? Um, you know, I once had well, two answers to that. One, my uh, I just sit down and write. There's a there's a thread in my in my mind is how I say it. Mm -hmm. Like, and I can feel that thread, and when it's like tinging, you know, this kind of twanging or whatever. There's like, I, I just basically grab hold of that thread and start writing and stuff comes out. It's like channeling my own whatever, right? So that's the first answer. Um, the second answer is that, you know, I, I had uh, a mentor, an old mentor of mine um, tell me that I, she, she'd read a lot of my poetry. This was in, in college and she said, you know, Adam, you're, you're a messenger is what she said. You're a messenger from those on the other side to those on this side. You're a conduit. You're a conduit for, for the, of messages to, to those on this side. And, you know, sometimes, you know, for me at least, sometimes I don't know how it happens, right? I just, I just start writing stuff comes out and it's like, I look at it after I'm like, holy cow, what was that coming from? You know? Um, so, yeah. And so what's the subject matter of your poems in this book? Well, each one's a little different than the others, you know, mm -hmm. but they all involve, of course, my angel. Um, they're all, you know, you could call, like, 
you could call them spiritual pep talks, you know, really some, quite a few of them. You could call them like reconnecting from mortal to an immortal. Um, you could call them, you know, different, you know, you could say different ways. Mm-hmm. Right. Do, do you have a name for your angel? Do you call no. anything? No. I call her angel. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes yeah. it easy. Yeah. And so you yeah. were writing poetry before you did this book. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I, back in the day, I published a different book called Embattled Me, A Poet's War. Um, or, I'm sorry, a what's war? A Poet's War. A Poet's War. Oh, interesting. And, yeah. So that one, um, that one's not for sale right now just because of some issues I've got, but my hope is that it becomes republished, you know? Yes. Um, so anyway, yeah. Oh, Long answer. Okay. Yeah. And is writing poetry your your day job? Um, I don't have a day job. Um, every time I work a job, my brain shuts down again, and I have issues, and I either end up in the hospital or I stop work. Right. Um, so it's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's an ongoing thing. The brain is so essential to our functioning. Um, but it sounds like your brain is, is wired to connect with something much bigger than yourself. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I know that you were a church-going person before this happened, or while this was happen- happening. So, like, what type of faith were you brought up in? I was brought up in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, yeah. Angel Mar- uh, Maroni, isn't it? Moroni. <laughs> Moroni. Moroni. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, that faith talks about angels, right? Yeah, definitely. We definitely believe in angels. Yeah. yeah. So what was your family's reaction or your church's reaction when you actually had one appear to you? Um, well, I didn't exactly tell everybody about it um, <laughs> when it first happened. Sure. Really, I only told one person. Um, that was my dad. And it wasn't right after it happened. It was like months and months and months later when I was functioning enough that I could actually communicate what had happened to me. Yeah. So it took a long time, you know. Wow. What was his reaction? I mean, that's not something you would come out and tell your parents. No. My dad is a very strong guy, you know. Um he, he listened, and, it, and I didn't just tell him about the angel. I told him everything that had happened during those nine months. So I basically just dumped on him. <laughs> I basically just, you know, info dumped for, for a half hour or whatever. Um, and he, um, he, he just sat there, and he took it in. And, he, and, and he, we got, I got done. He was like, you've had some choice experiences. And that was it. And it was like, that was exactly the response I needed because I didn't need like, um, you know, fanfare or just like, wow, or whatever. It was just like, you've had some choice experiences. It was like, you know, the right thing to say. Mm -hmm. So. How do you think that experience affected you? It changed everything. How? Um, Besides the whole mundane thing, mm-hmm. well, besides the whole, you know, this is, I mean, this life is so pointless because I could just be with my angel in heaven. You know, besides that, it was like, it was like it, it became, over time, took a long time, but it became a, much more than a happy thought, you know, it became like a, a, a reason to keep going. You know, when I didn't want to keep going. Yes. Um, In fact, when I had no motivation at all to keep going, it was like, she's the reason I kept going. Um, It was, you know, if I can say so, it was excruciating. um, That, that heartache that I felt, you know. Right. Which again is, is fairly known I can't say it's common but it's known among people who've had similar experiences it's just that um, 
oh, that nos nostalgia in terms of um, nostalgia meaning it's just a um, missing of home. Yeah, pull. It's a pull. Mm -hmm. Right. Similar, similar things were reported after seeing the movie Avatar. A lot of people saw that and thought, well, I, I don't belong here. I belong there. And it's similar yeah. to a pull. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, did your church recognize what happened and accept it? Well, it's not like, you know, I, there's really, there's only a relative few people, not the church, but people that I, that I shared it with at first. And I mean, now that the book is out, I'm sharing it with everybody, but, um, but no, I, I didn't share it with too many people at, at the start. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? It was sacred. It's still sacred. You know, it's sacred information. And also, you know, it's not just sacred in the usual way. Like this is something I shouldn't share kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My angel, um, my angel's love isn't something that I can share with anybody else. Right. I can tell them about it. And I can tell them how, and I can describe it, but it's totally inadequate, of course. Um, wow. So, I, I don't know if that I, that doesn't sound like it answered your question, but no, um, it does. I totally understand. I mean, that was very intensely sacred and personal to you. You mm -hmm. know, that type of thing you do keep close to the heart. You know, I teach Reiki for kids, and I tell them. The, the symbol that we use, it's sacred. We don't share it with anybody, and that just drives them crazy. They want to share it. And I, no, it's sacred. Mm -hmm. It means something really powerful. We don't just go sharing it willy-nilly. So I do honor that. I, I respect that, Adam. I, I honestly do that you would, you would keep that to yourself at first, right? Right. So would you be willing to share some of your poems? Sure. Um, I'd love to hear them. Um, so I'm going to be looking down while I'm reading. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, so the first, I'm probably going to share the number one poem in the book. Mm -hmm. Okay. First, I, I can show, share other ones, but okay. This is, this is um, of course about my angel and I, they're all about it, my angel and I, but this describes the whole story in a nutshell. Mm. This is called Eternity's Joy. Two angels of glory in heaven and in love clasped hands and spoke words far, far above that someday when God would, they would meet again, that they'd hold to each other through inferno, tempest, and quake to the end. One angel by nature and by name, love, lived for mortality, pure like the dove, caring far deeper than others could care. Hurting for caring makes one far more aware sharing her love, the love eternal, divine, the love that makes darkest hatred unwind, doing the good that God would have her do. She saved lives, patching rifts with her wondrous heart glue. God himself having placed in her his light, she drew others after her to fight for the right. And when another might falter on the way, she would encourage, embolden, on the right path they'd stay. Like the lighthouse that illuminates the path, she showed God's way to escaping God's wrath. The way was to do always what God would have her do, no matter the weather he'd carry her through. And so she would be remade anew, a spiritual lighthouse, all dark to undo. When her mortality drew to a close, she returned to her king, to whom all who die go. And at some point, her king called her and said, Your eternal companion languishes near dead. In the mortal realm where once you dwelt, he prays to survive the hand to him dealt. The path he was called upon, the anguish he's borne, Go, save him from whom all life is shorn. With scarce a reply, she sped from God's side, finding her love standing, yet all strength having died. On his last legs, life slipping away, she rushed to him, embraced him. Later, he'd say that an angel engulfed him, so great was her love. Such were his words of her sent from above. Her spirit, energy, love, and glory allowed a spent mortal to add more to his story. But darkness and evil have since played their hand. Oft has he forgotten what it means to stand. 
While Tempest he's pushed through, and Skirmish he's fought, winning solo, he simply cannot. Yet in special moments when his turmoil is still, and he's listening and hoping for heaven to fill the stillness, he's recalled that he still desires. He sees God's special daughter, not else transpires. Her face he recognized, though he could not recall how they knew each other. A veil blocked as a wall. God's grace enables him to learn more of the reason she came to him for. Though oft of his filth he has felt ashamed, and though his self-hatred, self-loathing, and blame have left scars most ugly upon his soul, tis only God, family, and her he lives life for. In such sacred moments when he pictures her near, are moments preciously sweet and dear. For such moments he eagerly yearns, pondering it grows easy to discern, that all things he was sent forth to learn, endurance, compassion, hope, and faith, charity, and all the rest, are lessons required for they too to be blessed. For when their eternity they at last see, equal they must of necessity be. For such not shall ever annoy, bound forever in eternity's joy. That's lovely. It really does tell your whole story. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hers too, in a way. Yeah. You know, she seems sure. chosen to do this. Mm -hmm. and her, her story in that kind of reminds me of Michael, Archangel Michael. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Just her, her battles and everything. So that was yeah. interesting. Yeah. So, that, but this, this all leads me to another question for you, Adam. Why you? Why do you think you were chosen for this experience? I've never thought about that, honestly. Oh. I just, you know, which is, you know, I should have thought about that maybe, but um, I think, uh, I think if I had to guess, I would say that, you know, we each have a vital role to play um, here on earth in helping other people and whatever our role, specific role to each of us is. I think for me, um, I've always been blessed with the ability to, um, to care. And while I think that caring about somebody is different than loving just pure love, like my angel has and is possessed with and is filled with, you know, I think being able to care is something that I have strongly and, you know, and I think in order to do this story or any story of worth, you have to care. You have to care not only about the story, you have to care about the people who might hear it, you know, and you have to care that they'll be helped maybe by it, right? Um, I think everything that I've been through is because it was I, I went through and God put me through because I needed to become who I am in order to share the story that's inherent in the things that I've been through. Does that, does that? It does. It does. You needed to tell the story. So you needed to have the story so that you mm -hmm. could experience the things. If, if I am understanding correctly. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so what do you hope that your book walking with my angel does? I mean, what do you want to communicate with it? I hope that it touches a heart. I hope that it saves a life and I hope that happens over and over and over and over and over again. You know, I hope it never stops. I hope there's always somebody who discovers it anew. I hope that, you know, somebody picks, I hope that a new person every day or, or however often picks up the book and just sits down and starts reading it just because they, they see the cover and they're like, I have to learn what this is about. And they, maybe it helps them in their life. You know, my, my hope is that it does that for untold amounts of people, but one, it's, it's always one by one by one. Absolutely. Well, and you know, being on podcasts and doing interviews will certainly help to reach other people and, and touch other people. Um, and I hope you have some more lined up. So, Thank you. <laughs> Would you mind uh, reading another short one? Um, I don't have any short ones. <laughs> oh, they're, all, they're all pretty long. That that one that I just read you was the longest um, in the yeah. book. I can read you one that's slightly shorter, but it's still long. Um, right. Do you want another one? Let's let's hear it. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so we're gonna go. 
this is just so background. This is a poem from the perspective written from the perspective of my angel. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Yeah. So, um, so here we go. This is, Oh, my warrior. When God brought us, Oh, my warrior, when God brought us together, eons passed, and our eyes met, and our focus was caught and held, full fast, and transfixed in full for gazing, we knew our mate of soul, we grasped somehow that together our half was now a whole. In that place so sacred, where after oft we did return, we grew closer and stronger, of God and of our path to learn. God made us for each other, much have we walked through, when taking one single pained anguish step was the hardest thing to do. You've protected me against enemies when in their midst we stood. You fought for us in heaven as we long promised that we would. And when wounded in thy spirit death, you longed for only me. Father granted that I run to drag you from the dread melee. You have such faith, my warrior. It's preserved us time long gone. You have compassion for God's children. You have the gift of song. You have also a connection to we on the other side. Our whispered words with pen and paper you've often inscribed. And so oft have you taken those writ words to them in need, in the exact moment they pled our God to intercede. We've learned together, we've fought together, through all we have grown close. We endure veil separation, accepting what God knows. When we stood together premortally, so close, hand in hand, and heard the mortal challenges our mortal, our mortal God for us planned, we knew we'd be separated, that our connection would be torn, until you, my beloved warrior, stood, all strength from you full shorn. We knew we'd reach that point wherein I'd have to save your life, when the threads of your mortality would hang upon a knife, that in that moment I alone could preserve your embattled soul, that you'd ache ever after, grasping why you'd ne'er been whole. Such is our story, and such are burden psalms, in this our current hour, when doubt, in part, seems calmed. I'm by your side. You sit sick in bed, as off before. I know you know I'm with you. We know you want no more. That our aid from across the veil, powerful though it surely feels, does not empower you, my sweet and battled rider warrior, to heal. It doesn't finish your written work. It brings not fulfillment, nor does it engender satisfaction, what you so long have been wanting for. But it does confirm to you a truth you rarely shown. Midst ocean, storm, and fire, you've never been alone. When ocean storms have fully raged and you struggled in your boat and you grasped the truth that was not you keeping you afloat, when infernos raged and you within chose to walk on in the flame, the light within your heart showed you God knew well your name. When blizzard fierce all round you, blinded you with reflected light, with limbs numbed from the cold, you stumbled on keeping the fight. You've wanted mortality over. You've wished our mission complete. You've waked to lay our life in some total at Christ's feet. Come with me, O oh my warrior, kneel with me before our Lord, trust fully in him with me, our lives in him are restored. Wow, that's really like she's just speaking to you. Yes. I love that. I love that you can have a conversation with your angel at any time. Well, yeah, you know, it's it helps if I have pen and paper. <laughs> True. You know, she... You know how they talk about the muse as, as writers, you know, or, or okay. as artists? Mm -hmm. I think she's my muse. <laughs> Sounds so, like she's your soulmate, too. Yes, she's my soulmate. Wow. Wow, that is amazing. Well, Adam, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Is there Thank you, Christy. Oh, you're welcome. Is there anything left that you have not mentioned that you think is important? Um, oceans, there's oceans of that, but, uh, um, you know, I, I think listeners will have to read your book. Yeah. <laughs> yep. They will have to read. And again, your book is walking with my angel. Um, yep. And <laughs> by Adam Scott Campbell, and this is available on Amazon. Is that correct? Amazon. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it available anybody else? No, just Amazon. And it's, uh, hardcover, paperback, and and Kindle ebook as well. Great! Oh my! All three. Goodness. So exciting. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Adam. Thank you, Christy. Radiate Wellness is an international community of holistic and alternative healers. 
dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.